let's talk a little bit about you letting people through the door and 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 i really love this transition from sync sound yeah so you start working at sync sound um you're probably doing ads let's talk about it now from in fact just what what did it feel like and how was it for you now to begin like this studio is mine this is this is home um and now into the music that transition was i think it was my business my, my business savviness yeah. Um, what what used to happen in Sing Sound was, um, I, and this is really important for younger people to understand because I see a lot of young creators making the same same you know the mistakes that you don't need to really make. Um, I was lucky; I fell in love with equipment. I still have you know a, a love hate relationship with equipment. Um, what would happen was I would go into an agreement. Like with Sync Sound, my, my salary was 12, 10,000 shillings. My house rent was 12,000 baht. The, what year are we talking about? This is, this is 1995. Okay. It's, it's like earning 40 Gs now. Still, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to ball on 40K unless... You need two more Gs <laughs> for your rent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I still need to top up that salary for rent. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it as a leap of faith but I said this is the caveat you're paying me very little but I want 40% of any job I bring in and they looked at me and said actually we haven't had work in here since we opened up this company so do you go ahead if you think you can bring in work we'll be more than happy to give you 40% I said okay put that within my contract and they did and I thought okay um, so I need to find money. First thing I did, I recorded, so I have access to a studio. I record um, a song. Um, I call it Beat the Heat. And I walk into Coca-Cola offices and I ask to see the MD of Coke. I must have been smoking something. How do you go and ask <laughs> to see the MD? And the secretary is so shocked at my confidence that she says, hold on. And she says, there's a guy, there's a boy who wants to see you. And the MD says, oh, let him in, let him in. How old so, are you so, about at this time? I was 24 or something like that. He says, let him in. And um, I meet him, some French guy, and um, he asked me, so what do you do? I say, I'm a musician. He says, oh, great, lovely. We, we want to meet musicians like you and see, and you know, he's doing the the normal thing that an mm -hmm. MD would do, you know, just to... And he says, so, so what brings you here? And I say, well, I was in my studio and um, I, I, I thought you might be interested in, in a song. So I recorded a song for you. And he says, oh, that's interesting. So he plays the song. And he gets to 30 seconds and he stops. And this white guy turns red. And I'm like, uh-oh, I think I just burnt my only hope in getting that two G's, remember I needed <laughs> <laughs> But my only Talking hope, yeah. Right. <laughs> and he says, wait a minute. And he gets onto the phone and he calls his advertising agency and he says, how come I'm the one who has the commercial that I've been asking you guys to develop? What? How come you've not given me this commercial and this guy is in my office with the commercial that I've been asking you guys for? I'm like, oh. Wow. <laughs> so he says, take this tape, take it to Makan Erickson. I'm like, okay. So we get to Makan Erickson, and Makan Erickson, the MD is now livid with us. He's like, how dare you approach our client without our authorization? Blah. And I'm just like, look, I didn't even know the procedure. I'm a young guy. <laughs> I know this is Coke. I know this is a song that I've made for Coke. I'm giving it to Coke. I don't know who you are. And he, oh, I understand. And um, I didn't make two Gs. I made 40 Gs <laughs> of my first job. Dude, what, what's 40 Gs <laughs> like now? It's like making 200K. Whoa. And all I needed was two Gs. <laughs> so I top up my two Gs. And because I liked equipment, what I would do is I would tell, I would tell my bosses every time they're traveling, we don't have this in the studio. Here's money. Go and buy this. So you own that, even though it's so, in the studio. Yeah. And and um, remember, Coke 
fell in love with my work. So Coke, I did Coke, I did Sprite, I did Fanta, I did Stony, I did all the Coke brands. And you're making, every and you're making that 40%? No, more. Because oh. now they have faith. And then, no, no, not the 40 Gs. You're making the 40 percent because you brought yes, in the I'm clients. Making a, yes, it's my, it's my clients. And then people started. Oh, if you want music, go to TED. If you want music, go to TED. If you want commercials, go to TED. So Stravinsky vodka, you know, random things started happening. And then people would come and say, Oh, we want to do radio shows as well. And I started doing radio shows for like Metro FM and and all of that money is money that I just needed. Damn. Uh, so what happened was you became rich <laughs> i said well no i i became equipment rich because okay. oh you were any, investing any extra piece of equipment that uh we needed i would put the money in i would put the money in mm -hmm. so my transition was right there what happened was one day after working on Kalamashaka, going to Nigeria, um... Dude, you can't just get grand. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind selector, starting with the first artist now. Who, was it Hardstone? I started, in Sing Sound, I started working with Hardstone. Immediately after Coke, I, I, I got in Hardstone. Okay, let's please All right. talk about, <laughs> hey, dude, you're running over legends, history. <laughs> so, so, as Hart, um, we used to do a lot of gigs, and when we were doing the gigs, um, we'd, we'd bump into other artists. I had bumped into a guy called Hardstone. No mobile phones, no nothing. So I had written a note on a piece of paper and given it to him. Well, given it to somebody to give to him because we we're in the middle of a gig, so you know we didn't really have communication. I just watched him perform, and I thought, mm. so. What did, you, what did you see in him that you liked? Energy energy no one to this present day has that energy he had he had a presence that would shake an entire stadium one person i've never seen a person like that um the only the only other person who i've ever seen have that kind of effect on people is michael jackson and this is the truth um and that's what i saw and nobody else saw it. It's like I was seeing something that nobody's seeing. And it's not that he was performing his own music or anything. He just went on stage and he sang some reggae music and then he left the stage. I thought, I've never seen a person with that kind of, that kind of, it's just a presence. And um, he looked for me based on that note. He said, you wrote me this note. Um, so I, I, I've come to look for you. And I said, yeah, yeah, great. Lovely. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and make music for you in the studio. But I want you to um, be under our record label, at Sync Sound Studios. And he says, well, that's fine. And um, I, I come from Jericho, so you guys are going to have to pay for my fare and blah, blah, blah. And I say, well, no problem, because again, I'm making extra money. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. this extra money I'm making, I might as well put it in these artists so if they have problems i can invest in them so i had hearthstone i had kawesa and i had uh, kawesa from uganda mm -hmm. and i had shades of black um, um who Fiona, was in shades of black fiona mungai and laura mm -hmm. um two girls who had finished uh, Musongari high school and um they were they just wanted to sing um they were like the en vogue of back in the day you know <laughs> so those were the three after I had released the Heart album and finished with that, um, those those were the three projects I was working on concurrently. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, we got we got uh, a record deal with uh, Kelele Records in Germany. And Kelele Records said, "You guys produce the music, send it to us. We do the mastering and the duplication and the distribution." And we thought, well, that's pretty okay because it's. It, it means that we get CDs into the country and we get mastering, international quality mastering, and we also get international exposure. Explains why the sound was so good. Um, so we thought to ourselves, oh, okay, great. Um, so we, I, I, I started working with Hearthstone and- um, how, I, how was that? Because that guy, he shook the industry. Ohiki. Exactly. Uh, it, was, it was a stroke of luck. Um, Ohiki was actually the very last song we did 
on the album the very very last song and we did it out of okay so we've done everything else what haven't we done some r b okay fine no let's and then a friend of mine um isaac was playing the bass and he was playing doom 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 do 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 doom i said isn't that marvin Gaye? Mm. and he says yeah i just i i love the bass line i said just do that again and he does that and i said all right well you play the bass line and let me put the keys in and then we put a drum loop and then hartstone heard it and said and started in your baya mare wito and I was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Goosebumps moment. And we recorded Ohiki, a Kikuyu traditional wedding mm-hmm. song with Marvin, Marvin Gaye, Sexual Healing. god <laughs> you know um as soon as radio got it radio couldn't have enough as soon as the clubs got it they couldn't have enough as soon as, and hardstone just became this huge artist that people just wanted to be a part of mm-hmm. this little shy boy from jerry you know who god loved so much that he was the only one out of his gang who survived he's the only one who didn't die He's the only one who decided not to become a bank robber. He's the only one who didn't end up in committee. The only one. What Hardstone used to do on the weekends, which was really used to break my heart, was he'd say, I can't, I can't see you guys today. I need to go visit my mate in committee. I need to go visit. And he would say, you know what? If it wasn't for this music, I'd be right there with them. I would be right there with them. You know, so, so when god was asking me to do what god asked me to do you're understanding it <laughs> i'm i'm now see seeing fruits. yeah i'm now seeing wow if i wasn't in this guy's life at this particular point holding his hand he'd be he'd be lost broken or dead so i need to continue um holding artist's hands and um heartstone had a, a, a struggle with uh, um drugs and stuff mm-hmm. and I remember one day he came into the studio high as a hell and stuff and I said, dude, you have to choose. It's either music or the drugs. So go home when you're sober and you feel you want to do music, come back. And from that point, he changed his life. He started every morning, he would just jog like hell, keep fit like hell, come to the studio and pour all his energy in there. And I think the reason for, for, for his, his um, drug abuse at that particular point was he's coming from a situation where he knows, man, all my friends are being popped one by one by one because of, you know, uh, being thugs on the street and stuff. And, and the ones who are remaining are in prison. And, and, and it must break you as, as, as a guy who's transitioning from, from boyhood to adulthood, you know? It must break you psychologically and emotionally. And that's, that's why he must have been doing that. But I'm glad that he shed that off and f- focused all that energy onto, onto his music. Because what would happen is, Hartstone would walk into an arena 
And I remember seeing people faint as he walked by. I, true story, I remember seeing people faint as he walked by, just walking by them. And I'd be like, this guy has a presence that, mm -hmm. it's, it's insane. It is crazy. It's the Michael Jackson effect. Yes, um, it's crazy. Put up your hands and you scream. Bad soul in the yard, boy. Put up your hands and you scream. Expensive perfume fill the world room. Papa and the con wait to feed the wedding. Mom and stop by the bride and the groom. They be ready for the wedding concert. Papa and the con want to propose. Is there anybody who has anything to say or dance about this wedding? Hallelujah. Okay. Would you take Luan to be only sugar plum and a wedding wife? Yes, pastor, I do. Luan, would you take Anton to be a wedded husband? Yes, pastor, I do. In times of joy and sorrow, for the better of today and the better of tomorrow. You can kiss the bride and the bride can kiss the woman and you go honeymoon. You must have one. Ask God in the yard, boy, put up your ass on your screen. And that I am a part of this guy's life is a blessing for me, you know. And after Hearthstone, then people started seeing the effect that you could have using your gift, just mm -hmm. music. Kalamashaka came knocking on the door. How, how did that? How did the Kalamashaka connection happen? Uh, Kalamashaka was in. Florida.